Yeah, good afternoon. It's Jim from jagfx.com. It is Saturday, the 12th of August, 2023. This is my weekly analysis video where we have a look at the daily pairs, uh, Forex pairs. I'm trading on the daily time frame using the high probability and divergence methods for my trading books. So welcome to the weekend, folks. Hope everything's going okay for you. Thanks for watching the video. If you do like it, please hit the like or subscribe button. As I always say, they're not the most exciting videos by any means, but we just try to get the message across. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And as always, everyone's more than welcome to join any of the JagFX groups, whether it be the Facebook group, Telegram channels, or the Discord channel from Matt from Family um, Trading Man's Discord. I'm just a guest poster there. All right, let's get into it. Uh, first up, we normally have a look at the news for the week ahead. So let's find that. I've changed my laptop around a bit. Um, it's under the pump at the moment. It come up. Dell sent me a message saying hard drive failure imminent, which is not a good thing when I'm stuck in Cambodia. But anyhow, let's have a look at the news ahead. This is the free Forex factory economic calendar. Uh, the good thing about it, other than the free part, is you can set up filters to just look at the currencies that you wish to. For me, it's just the eight major pairs, eight major currencies, sorry. And I only like to look at the high impact events, which are the red ones or the public holidays, etc., which are the gray ones. Uh, you can set it up in your local time. For me, I'm in Cambodia, so it's Indochina time. So that just makes life a lot easier. So nothing on Monday, Monday, August the 14th. This is a zip blank. Tuesday, um, just some minutes out of Australia. Uh, I thought I closed that, but obviously not. <laughs> Uh, minutes out of Australia, um, wage price index, etc. out of Australia, claimant count change out of the UK, France and Italy have got holidays on Tuesday, Canada, CPI numbers out of Canada and core retail, retail sales out of the US on Tuesday. So it's a pretty busy day. Wednesday, New Zealand interest rate news. Now, I don't think they're expecting a rate rise. No, it's at this stage, 5.5, which is pretty high. Probably, probably one of the highest on the planet in the Western world. 5.5 in New Zealand. And um, CPI numbers out of the UK. And Thursday, probably the biggest news on Thursday, other than the FOMC meeting minutes from the US, Australian employment numbers, unemployment and employment, which is where you want to look at it. And US has also got unemployment claims, but that's a big one. So New Zealand interest rates is probably the big one for the week. And the Aussie employment numbers are the other one. And Friday, nothing again. It's kind of unusual, isn't it? It's been pretty quiet last couple of weeks. This is August, which is technically, they call it the summer months in trading. Um, things can quieten down, and that's reflected on the charts. It's just, it's the summer holidays and the Northern Hemisphere. So a lot of big, the institutional type traders and that, a lot of their traders take a break this time of the year. I don't know why it is. Something's over summer, I guess. It's always seems the same here in Asia. Summer's every day of the year, every day of the year. Anyhow, all right, let's go. Let's get on with it. Let's have a look at the um, first before we look at the charts. Let's have a look at this Word document. Like I said, I've changed my laptop around a bit and I've trouble finding things. All right, we're going to be looking at the charts in a minute. There's going to be lines everywhere. There's going to be indicators. Um, this Word document. Just pause the video, have a read of this, take a screenshot. Just explains what the different settings are and what they are. So you've got three moving averages, a 240 LMA, 100 EMA, and 50 EMA. QMP filter is the red and green dots on the price chart. You can read that. Red generally represents bearish. Green or blue is bullish. I don't know why I can't decide between green and blue, but red's definitely bearish. Um, grey vertical lines are just warning signals that something is about to happen or could happen. Uh, you'll see red dotted horizontal lines, they're stop losses. Green dashed horizontal lines, they're big numbers, parity, round numbers, etc. And the indicator below the price chart is the MACD Platinum, zero lag MACD, that's all it is. It's just got a fancy name, MACD Platinum, I don't know where that come from. Um, I've had it for years, so I just use it. Oscillates around the zero level. Generally, I'm looking to sell when it's above the zero level and buy when it's below the zero level. So looking for it to come back to the zero level, basically. So you'll see this when we go through the charts. You can have a read of that. Take a screenshot, as I said, or pause the video and have a read. It's not a big document. All right, let's get on to the charts. Now, as I said, where are they? 
Got to, I, I just messed up everything. I used to have two Google Chrome windows open all the time and Firefox, and the trading view charts were on Firefox. Um, and my memory was running 100% max all the time. This laptop runs 24-7, so I've just got to be more conscious uh, of my laptop use. They're not designed to be used like a desktop, I guess. Uh, that's what I'm saying. They're sitting on a cooling base, but I don't even think that's working. All right, let's get into the charts. This is TradingView. I use um, TradingView for all my analysis. Most of my trading, I think all bar one platform now is on MT5. I think I've still got one MT4. Um, this is trading view. This is my list here on the right. It's not all 28 pairs, just a select bunch of pairs that I use for trade examples. I'm not a trade um, signal provider or anything like that. So they're in alphabetical order. If they're highlighted in light blue, it means there's trade on. Some management trade management's been taken. Highlight, no highlight means no trade on. Um, dark blue means there's a trade on. No action's been taken as yet. And if there was any highlight in orange, means I want to talk about it in the video. And just a heads up for Monday, there is no new trades, no new trade signals, and there is no trade management. So it's, a, it's been a quiet week. And you'll see that reflected in the charts as we get into them. All right, let's have a look. So we normally have, uh, well, I normally have my title. On the right, you'll see a trade. So this is there's a trade on, OzCAD. It's highlighted in light blue, which means action's been taken. So we had a sell here. This red vertical line is a sell. So here's my details. Here is the pair the date, the signal, and my thoughts behind the trading and any trade management I've done on that trade. Now, there's initial stop loss. That's initial stop loss. Now, when I take this trade, when I took this trade on the 20th, so that's the 20th is that open of that candle there, basically, I take a screenshot and post that in all those groups, the JagFX, the um, Facebook group, the Telegram channels, and Matt from Family Man's Discord channel. And I think I even... Put them on Twitter if I can through my TV uh, trading view channel. So it's they're all taken at the time. The screenshots. Not this is not after the fact. Any trade management's also called at the time in the group. So it's all very transparent and just to show you that the system does work, warts and all. So that's that's all it is. So we took a sell here. I've taken uh, already closed half. So first of August. Let's have a look at the first of August is. Yeah, there. Probably just a MACD platinum through the zero level, um, and it's dropped down nicely. And I've moved my stop down now inside the entry level, so I can't lose on this trade at all. In the meantime, I've got this grey vertical line here. The reason that's there is because there's a green dot on the MACD platinum below the zero level. Remember, I said I'm looking to buy when it's below the zero level and sell when it's above the zero level. So that's above here. Now it's below. It's just a warning line, this grey line, saying "Get ready, Jim. There could be a possible buy coming." In the meantime, I've been drawing these green trend lines. Potentially, um, here we have regular bullish divergence forming. If you know price keeps on heading down, this line keeps on going down, it's no longer valid, I just remove my charts. I'll show you an example of what I, how I do that. It's not really that tricky, but I'll show you it's another pair shortly. So we're looking good on the AUSCAD sell, looking good. I'm gonna race through this pretty quick because there's not much happening today. Uh, Aussie Yen, there's a bit of explaining here. I'm in a sell from back here. So what's that? The 21st of June. So let's just have a look. Here it is here. So that's this one. So there's sometimes there's multiple trades on. This is the case here. Um, there's old trades details left on there also, but this is the one. We took a sell here. We took a buy there. That's the 5th, 14th of July. Yeah, you can see what happened. Stopped there for a loss. Wow, wow. Anyway, we took a sell. Um, the stops there. We can't lose on that. Took this buy here, got stopped out, spiked down that stop. Now this was still valid, this buy signal. Um, there's see a green dot on the QMP filter. There was no, and it went up and just come down, then popped back up again. Now I took this buy on the the um, blue dot on the MACD platinum, still below the zero level. Bit of a tricky one. Didn't break the trend line. I probably should have waited for a trend line break. I've drawn the trend line there. <laughs> Didn't break it. Uh, it would have been a better option, but I, I was a bit impatient. And then price came down against me, as Murphy's Law would have it, and we got this opposite QMP filter dot. Normally, I would close the trade then. But because we'd had um, hidden bullish divergence initially for this buy, then here was regular bullish divergence as the rain comes. 
Um, regular bullish. So we had two divergences. L one two hidden bullish, regular bullish, and this. Then we get a sell signal. MACD platinum still below the zero level. I've ignored that sell signal, and I've just thought I'll stay in this. I've got a stop in place. I've already got a sell. I can't lose him with a stop in place. So I'm protected either way. If the if the market just kept on heading down, sure it would have been stopped out of the second buy, but that sell there is still got me in good profit. So that's the reason. And as would have it, it went down one day, then it's rolled up slowly and starting to head back up again. So we're still in this sort of trade. It's a little bit tricky, but there's, I'm just trying to think, look at the bigger picture here. That's all. So that's the Aussie yen. So we're in a sell we can't lose. We're in a buy that we're just below the entry level a bit. So it's not too bad. Aussie USD. And here we go. All right. We're in a sell, which is a good thing. I don't like it personally because most of Cambodia's money is built in US dollars and I've got an Australian bank account, so you can do the math. I want my Aussie dollar up <laughs> at parity or better. <laughs> in the meantime, we're at the 65 cent level. That's this big green level here. It's a big round number with the Aussie and we're right on it now. But I'm in a sell, which is in the Forex trading world. That's a good thing because we're heading, it's heading down. Can't lose on it. Um, we can drag that stop down lower, you know, the next obvious place would just above these spikes here, but there's no rush. We'll just wait and see what happens. Green dot on the MACD platinum below the zero level, you know, and a lot of, there'd be a lot of orders around this level, a lot of orders, but we're looking good. Euro CAD, now this one took some action, what's the day, 12th, yesterday, yeah, Friday. So yesterday I moved my stop right up. The initial stop was at 144218, which is uh, in here somewhere, just in this level here somewhere. Uh, now, yesterday, on after Thursday's close, I looked at that candle, MACD Platinum, you look down, it's just poking through the zero level. It's going nowhere fast. I've been in this trade a few days, it's going nowhere fast. So I just dragged my, I was going to close the trade, and it might have been a smart thing to do for a few pips, just a few tiny win. Instead, I've just dragged the stop right up nice and tight. So just give them the opportunity in case it does take off. Really need to see it break this high here to be convincing. You can see the moving average all tightening up. It's all getting a bit tight at the moment. But there was divergence there. You can see the um, hidden bullish divergence. It's a little bit tricky to spot, but it's there. Euro yen. We're in a buy, have been for a while, all the way since the 23rd of March. It's not my longest trade, but it's certainly up there. Uh, looking good, just trying to stop at the moment. And here's an example of the uh, what I'm talking about in the Aussie yen. Same, you know, these are, all these yen pairs tend to move the same at the moment, at, uh, at these days. So we had, initially we had hidden bullish divergence, followed by regular bullish divergence. So there's the one, two again, exactly the same scenario. And this one has popped up nicely. Uh, I didn't take that trade. I don't know why. I probably could have. Should have, but I didn't because I was already in a buy. All right, using rain gets heavier. Um, Euro USD, pretty similar to the Aussie. They tend to move the same, the Aussie USD and the Euro USD at times. Um, sell back here on the 21st of July, which was looking good. There's been some trade management. Um, so 28th of July closed half. So 28th of July, I'm thinking, yeah. Price MACD platinum through the zero level, price at the moving averages, close half. It popped up on um, Thursday, very close to my stop, didn't touch it, a few pips there, and Friday come back down again. Again, we've got this warning signal, MACD platinum, green dot below the zero level. That's all it is. Can't lose on the euro, looking good. Found Aussie. Sorry if your rain's heavy. I might pause the video, shut some windows. Yeah, the, I'm sorry about that. The rain just got really heavy. If you've ever lived in, I lived in the Northern Territory in Australia, up around Darwin, Groot Island, Catherine. If you ever lived up that part of the world, uh, the rain's super heavy there. Same here, it's even heavier, I'm sure it is. It's monsoonal weather. It's cool, but it's a bit annoying because it just comes out of nowhere. Anyhow, let's have a look. Pound Aussie. Now this is one, I think this is my longest open trade. Um, Back here, took a buy, 7th of Feb, so that's that one there. So we're still in it, um, stops up here, there's all my trade management, looking good, and yeah, so that's, that's, 
that's the big home run, that one. That's uh, 174, 704, 19 something. Yeah, it's a big one. So we can't lose on that. This green line here is the 1.90, just a round number. Next round number up would be the one, uh, the two, two, which is not that far off. But I don't know, where is it? Yeah, there it is. Not that far off at all. Oh, damn. Well, I think that's it, yep. All right, so we're in a buy, can't lose. That's the pound Aussie. It's looking good there. Pound Swiss, this is the one that's probably given me the most grief lately, one of all the pairs. Um, last trade was this buy here, stop and place, just hasn't gone anywhere. Got this big support level here. I've had a few goes at this lately. This used to be, this was a pair I used to like trading. <laughs> as soon as I started talking it up, I just, I've had nothing but drama since. So we've got a red dot on the MACD platinum just below the zero level there. So like in my private trading, I'm pretty sure I'm still in like a uh, buy trade from here. I'm still in that buy trade, took a hedge in another buy trade, and I'll probably be hedging again. So the MACD platinum is still below the zero level, so yeah. But we're in a buy, we're stuck halfway between the stop. There's a stop there, and there's the entry there. So it's probably the one that's giving me the most grief at the moment. New Zealand CAD, I didn't talk about the pound USD. I've had some bad luck on that one lately. <laughs> Not losing any money, but just not making any money either. All right, New Zealand CAD. Now, here's one I just want to show you an example of how I move the lines around. We're in a sell from the 18th of July. So we're looking good there. We can't can't lose on that. There's been some trade management. I'll hopefully drag that stop down even lower. Now, I've drawn this grey vertical line on here because um, there's a MACD plat. There's a green dot below the zero level. I've also drawn these potential... Um, hidden bullish divergence lines in, but as you can see, price has meandered, then Friday it's dropped right down. We've got a, a red dot on the MACD platinum below the zero level now, so we're back in the still selling. So we get, now I just get rid of that grey vertical line. Now if I was to adjust this green line, that's now a low, so I'm going to adjust that to my different colour, so basic trend line, and, it, and the divergence is no longer valid. Technically, it is just, but I'm hoping that'll drop down, so I'll just get rid of that line too. If this suddenly bounces up, then that that um, divergence is still valid, and we've got a support level here on price, so that's it. Now, we're just in sell, cleans up the chart a bit, and we're good to go. Hopefully, this keeps on dropping down. I'm in a um, heap of trades to the downside on my four-hour charts on this pair, so yeah, I'm, I need it to just... It's, I'm already in, in profit now, but it just if it drops down further, it'll be just icing on the cake sort of thing. Right, USD, Japanese yen. We're in a buy trade from back here, the 20th of July. And we've done some 3rd of August closed half, so I'm thinking that might be up here somewhere. Nope, no, where are we going? 3rd of August up here. All right. So price got here, stalled a bit, closed half, and I've dragged my stop up inside the entry level, and price is going up now at this previous high here, just mark it on the chart. Um, and we've got a green dot again uh, on the back D platinum above the zero level, so it's good. Hopefully it'll punch through this high and we'll make some more dollars. There's a USD, Japanese yen, XAU, USD, gold, in a cell. Uh, 4th of August closed half, so let's have a look. I'm thinking that might be in here somewhere. Yeah, MACD platinum's at the zero level, just start to stall a bit. Uh, I closed half here, and so we just, it's its just been a grind lately, but it, the good thing about gold, sometimes it just meanders a bit, and it's pretty, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, nothing's easy, but it, it tends to trend pretty well. Um, these green lines, that's 1800 level, which is a big number in gold, and that's a 2000 level, which is obviously a huge number in gold, big round numbers. All right, next three are just more for curiosity, US dollar which is against those basket of currencies. <laughs> the euro, the pound, the yen, Swiss franc, Canadian dollar, and the Swedish krona. Krona? Krona. Krona, yeah. Um, so this is just another chart, and it's looking good. At the moment, we got at this, we're starting at our resistance level. Still technically divergence, uh, hidden bearish divergence. 
But if it keeps on popping up high, that divergence is no longer valid, and we'll just take it from there. So MACD platinum above the zero level, so technically in sell mode, but you wouldn't, your last signal was this buy here. So you're still in that buy until confirmed otherwise. US 500, which is the S&P 500 or the US stock market, just a reflection on that. Um, trend was up, 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 as you can see by the moving averages. And the last signal was a sell here with the divergence, regular bearish divergence, and it's come down nicely to the moving averages. In the meantime, I've drawn these green trend lines in here for potential, potential setting up of regular, sorry, hidden, hidden, forget I said regular, hidden bullish divergence. So potentially setting up like a classic buy the dip sort of scenario. Price has come back to the moving averages, which is ideal. MACD platinum below the zero level, which is ideal. You just need the buy signal now. Bitcoin, USD. Uh, Bitcoin's back in sleepy mode. I think we're coming up to the Bitcoin halving. I think that's next year sometime. So that'll be, if you don't understand what it is, best just to Google it. I, it's way above my pay grade to explain it in this video. Uh, but yeah, it's a big event on the Bitcoin. I think it happens every four years or so. So, yeah, we just that's a 30,000 level. We're just meandering below that at the moment. So that's it for the charts, guys and girls. Like I said, nothing for Monday. There's no new trades, no trade management. It's all been pretty quiet during the August, summer, July, August, summer months. Um, yeah, enjoy the weekend. Like I said, everyone's more than welcome to join any of those groups. And, um, yeah, if you like the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you've got any questions or anything, hit me up in any of those groups. Happy to answer and discuss further. All right, enjoy the weekend, and thanks for watching. Cheers.